person too. No, I love you guys. Please stay. <laughs> so I'm gonna start the live stream. All right. Uh, Hello and welcome to Cabin Fever Radio Novellas Season 2, where an isolated group of talented actors and creators come together to stave off their madness and yours and keep us all entertained through dramatic readings of your favorite movies and TV shows, along with original material. This episode is sponsored by Ruano Films, but we'll hear more about them later in the show. I am your host for the evening, Mr. David Ruano, and in this season, we have the pleasure to bring you an original script that will be broken down into four chapters. We are going into chapter two on this one. And joining us for the reading is Robert Christopher Smith, Mr. David Rano, Mariah Hart, Braxton Rhea, Marissa Martin, Jess Barnell, Kelsey Jaffer, and Rob Fury. How is everybody? Doing great. Superb. Wow. <laughs> Sweet. Excited. Yes. We are Energy. definitely excited for this story called Vengeance Turns. It takes place in 1876, California, where a young woman loses everything, including her beloved husband, son, and daughter, in a violent attack that leaves her for dead, with a lust for bloody vengeance that turns her into a murder dish vigilante. I said it correctly. You can do it again if you want, David, or else we can get it in the retake. I recorded it like five times already, so we're good to go. Prepared. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how it goes. But this story is directed by Robert Christopher Smith, who will also be playing a couple different characters as well as the announcer. But if everybody's ready to go, we could probably go right into it. Everybody good? Everybody good? Nobody needs to go to the bathroom? Last minute? No? No? Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I gotta make bathrooms. <laughs> All right. So, guys, we're, we're delivering this tonight to you if you're watching. We're delivering this as a live stream. But we are also editing this uh, into an episodic form for podcasts. And I'm currently in the process of doing that for episode one as we speak. So, when this opens, it'll be on the chaotic mm -hmm. overlap of this rhythmic crashing of, of horse hooves running horses, guns being cocked, guns being fired, a horse whip, uh, a woman screaming, uh, enraged as she's engaged in bloody battle. And then that'll fade. Vengeance Turns. Welcome to the second installment of the Vengeance Turns live radio show. Tune in each week for the next two weeks to hear the tale of Rebecca Falcone Continue as everything is taken from her in 1876 California and her lust for bloody vengeance turns her into someone else entirely. Then we hear a little bit more sound effects. On our last episode, we met Rebecca Falcone, her husband Michael, and their two children, Emma and Edward. But then the same gang of murdering thieves that has been attacking and killing other families in the area also attacks her family, leaving everyone for dead. Rebecca barely escapes with her life as Simon Coltrane, the son of the violent gang's leader, Jefferson Coltrane, gets her onto a horse and ready to meet what he believes to be a tribe of local natives. Simon succeeds in getting her to the group. However, once there and before passing out, he hears a native woman in owl makeup speaking to him with a British accent. Tonight, we find ourselves at a camp of people who refer to themselves as the lost people. Simon wakes to see the same woman as before, but now without the owl makeup. He rubs his eyes, looking around, clearly disoriented and a little scared. 
Simon, you're awake. Good. Are you okay? I, I think I fell down. That you did. And down for two days you stayed. The sound effect of Simon Mia. kind of sitting up. Mia, where's Mia? We are taking good care of your mother. Come, I will take you to her. Then it is probably best that you go. Ain't my mama, but she's, she's, I ain't leaving her. That's it, and that's all. Hmm, well, not so unusual to find our families outside our own blood, I suppose. They call me delicate poison. Delicate poison. Uh, okay. What happened to her? To Mia? Can you tell me that? An attack. It, it was an attack. Some, some men. What men? What did they do to her? Why? They, they killed her family. Her, her, her kids, her husband, thought they killed her too. Natives? No, they... Dressed like natives? How did you... Well, is she... Is she gonna be okay? She is badly injured. Broken bones, trauma to her brain. However, her body is strong. Her body... Her body may recover. Inside, she, stay, she may still be dying. You can leave in the morning. Go back to your people in peace. We will take care of her. I ain't going nowhere without her. She's all I got. She's been your friend for a long time? Never met her before. She's the most important person in my life. And now we'll kind of hear the canvas flaps open of this Iwa, little teepee. In here. Like you, she hasn't moved since your arrival. She, she hasn't even moved? This is a good thing. She needs time to heal and she needs medicine. She's getting both. You also need... I need to make sure that she's okay. That's all I need. And then we'll hear Simon kind of settle down and kind of crawl over and lay down. I'll be sleeping right here from now on. We'll have a musical cue to kind of change our setting. And now we're going to pick up in town with Hester Blake talking to Mrs. Payne back at the general store. And of course, Jefferson is there as well. Take these things on out to our car, Jefferson. I'll be along shortly. Mrs. Payne is just finishing her story. Seems the fell cones are the latest family to fall victim to these awful savages out roaming the hills around our little town. Yes, ma'am. I'll be waiting out there for you. Ready to get you home when you are. They will hear the sound effect, a few items clanking together, as Jefferson's rustling everything together, get it outside, hear Jefferson's heavy footsteps, boom, 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 walking away, yeah, boom, we hear the door open and shut. Oh, it's just terrible about the Falcons, what those savages did to those poor children. I heard, I heard, but Rebecca, they never found her. No. Never found a body. There's no telling what those awful savages did to poor Miss Falcone. Ma, ma, ma. No telling. Well, now more than ever, it seems the writing is just on the wall, I guess. Mr. Payne and I have done well with our store. Looks like as, lo looks like as Blake Gold Mining wraps up business here, Blaketon and my little store will be gone too. A Blake Industrial Gold Mining Inc. is not going anywhere. In fact, we will finish this year larger and more successful than we even started it. The company and the town are growing, stronger than ever. But Mr. Blake, with his mer well, his passing, doesn't that mean no more Blake Mining? Oh, not even close, dear. Every good decision he has made since we got here two years ago. Well, they came from me in the first place. But his company... Is a corporation. 
I wouldn't expect you to understand. It's, it's very complicated business matters. I only understand because, well, my, my husband explained it all to me. And fortunately, I still have someone around to read all the legal paperwork for me. A corporation? All you need to understand, my dear Mrs. Payne, is that corporations make sure that no matter if one person or if several die, the company still lives. Well then, who runs this corporation? Why, well, Miss Payne, as primary shareholder, I control Black Industrial Gold Mining now. I'm only too fortunate that dear departed Mr. Falcone got those legal documents to me before this, this awfulness. In fact, we are getting ready to start blasting a few new brand new sites, one alone with more gold than our last three veins combined. I'm glad to see you eating. Already you look stronger. Thank you, delicate poison. Can I ask you a question? See that guy over there by the trees? I always see him over there. I know he's watching because I see him and you and all the other trainers giving each other hand signals sometimes. But he never really comes close. I did see his face though. It was scary. Like, like a tattoo of a big scary wolf mouth over his mouth and cheeks. I, I do know him. He's my brother. Really? I, I heard some other kids talking about him. Is it true he's called the ghost because of the way he kind of hides out over there? He's actually called ghost with silent knives for text. Unfortunately, it began as a mocking nickname, ghost long ago as a child for other reasons entirely, but like his appearance, mm. he has embraced it. Others called him ghost, mm. then ghost with silent knives, but it was he who added that last word. And he feels that word is most key, protects. If you would want to shorten it, I'm sure he would prefer protector to ghost. So, there's a story, like, like his nickname behind that whole thing, Ghost with Silent Knives Protects. Of course, many indeed. And I'm sure when the time is right, if you'd like, he will share them with you. But those stories are his to tell. Thank you again, Delicate Poison. I can call you delicate, right? Yes, please, Simon. I think I'd quite like that. Hello, Protector. I, I wanted to introduce myself. I'm Simon. I, I brought Mia here. But I was wondering, could you teach me that move you were just doing a minute ago? Mm. Hello, Simon. Of course. Here, grab this spear. Hold it like this. And we'll kind of fade him talking like that, and we're going to hear a woman screaming in the distance, kind of berserk, like, like an animalistic kind of screaming going on. And that's the kind of stuff I get from you on retake times, Kels. And we'll hear some footsteps running towards uh, Simon and Ghost. Simon, it's Mia. She's awake. Now we hear Simon start running, tearing off towards the, the direction of, of delicate poison. We hear things still crashing in the distance. Somebody's going crazy. You need me? Mia, Mia needs me? How is she? The crashing and the screaming continue. We need your help calming her. Listen. More screaming, things falling. Sorry, sorry. Jesus, Lord in heaven. Every time I've been in there and she just, she just lays there like a statue and, and now this? That's why I wanted you here. I have remedies that she needs badly. I need her to trust me. I need you, Simon. Come in with me. Help me soothe her. Help me help her. Um, I'm going in, just like a wild animal. Gotta keep my head down, no eye contact. 
soft, slow steps. The canvas opens as he goes inside the Ewa. Mia, it's me, remember? I got you here, I've been, I've been sleeping beside you, watching over you, t taking care of you. No! No, 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 no! Yes, yes, it, it's me, Mia, it, it's Simon. Mia? <laughs> Simon? It's, it's okay, Mia. It, it's all right. Delicate, I, I think you can come in now. Just be slow and, and quiet. Okay. I'm coming in. Nice and slow. Yeah. What? What? The shuffling sound as Mia moves around. Going to sit right here. Let's all just have a nice sit. That's right. Nice and calm. It's, it's working. She lays back down. And here, Kelsey, I'll get a little bit of steady, like, but kind of hoarse breathing from you, kind of. <sighs> Simon, look, she's going to sleep. Now we hear that canvas on canvas again. I've got to find something that makes a good sound for that flap opening going in and out of the Ewa. I brought fruit. They're scrambling as Mia kind of becomes animated again. Be very easy, brother. Sit down very slowly, handing me your kind and delicious offering. Go sits down, there's kind of a thump. Here, uh, delicate. Offer me some. I'll take it and eat a bite, then offer it to Mia. We're going to get the gushy sound of some like juicy fruit being chewed on. I'll try to find it, Braxton, but I may end up just calling out to you and see if I'm going to get you to eat a peach and record it. Mmm, it's good, Mia. See? Now you. Want some? Gushy, smaller bites from Mia as she tries some. Mmm. Mmm! <laughs> and Kelsey, like I was saying to Braxton, I may get you to do some eating a peach or something like that. Eat some canned peaches or something. Just take some little cool. bites or something. Well, now, this is much better. Much better indeed. <laughs> and so everybody's feeling better now uh, we're still inside the Ewa but we're going to have some music play to give us some passage of time Simon's sitting there Mia's head is in, his, in her lap uh, they're, they're holding food and stuff Mia finally seems to be at ease with us here and resting again Go. I know you're not Kumaye but I can't figure this out. I've seen other people like me out there, white people like back in the town, even the Chinese ones like working on the railroad. But why are your people called lost? Not these people, all people. It's our thought that as the European ways continue to spread here, that we all are moved further and further from nature that all of us have or are losing our way. It is not we who are lost people. It is people who are lost. White, black, brown, yellow, skin or country doesn't matter. When belch smoke becomes our sky and piss and poison run in streams like rivers, we are all lost. We have all lost. We and what? and want to convince sheep to become their own shepherd. Hey, can I get, uh, can I get you guys to go back and let uh, her do just that last yeah. line again before you come in, David? Yeah. We merely, we, we merely recognize this. And want to convince sheep to become their own shepherd. Uh, what? This country, its system, at war, with itself, the people of this country at war with themselves. But, yeah, but no, that, that war, it's, it's over. There is a deeper war being fought still. Their impermanence is burned into their name. No union stands forever. Separate and still equal defies the logic they claim to prize so highly. Were there 
where there are borders, there is weakness. So we're not lost people. We're at war with the U.S. Seditionists, like all the states in the South that are still on fire after all of this time? No. We are at war with the future they manifest. Ours is not a war fought merely with weapons, with violence. Our war is fought with ideas. We do not fight for glory. If we win, our names will not be written in fire across the sky. Then how will you know? We will know when this country is no longer a group of United States or any other type of state thing and is instead truly just one nation. When world, under, when, world, when world understands itself as truly one nation, all of us, one people, more same than not. And if we lose? If we lose, it matters not. Our names, like this country, will be hammered into dust quickly. This is natural. Even that which dies quickly may seem strong early. Their nation, our cause, your friend me as family, all the same to nature. Every moment of history survives only while strong and then feeds those next moments whose strength still grows as the previous perishes. The present moment, forever, only basks in the prosperity of now, blinded by itself to the past, proudly ignorant of a future without it. Now Mia starts to kind of wake up and she croaks her voice, very dry and cracked. <coughs> Thirsty. Of course you are, love. Slowly, though. Slowly. Put some sound effects of some drinking in here. <coughs> You, ghost with silent knives protect, or you, train me. <laughs> that is a very good sign, even quicker than I'd hoped. Good. Does this mean I can stay and keep training too? When does she start? I start tomorrow. One of my favorite moments right there. All right, so now we're outside of the Awa. And, uh, there's the, we hear the sound of a bowstring twanging because there's some training going on. So we hear a bow and arrow, essentially. Twang, whoosh, thump, an arrow sticks in a target. Whoa, Mia, delicate poison. You see that? I nailed that. Never fired an arrow before last week. So, what's next? Delicate? <laughs> next, you eat, then you rest. I will meet you back here in the morning. <laughs> Can it shit with this thing? Fucking hands about useless. May as well only have one arm. We will train your arm and make it stronger, Mia. With your injuries, you cannot expect instant success, especially with an instrument requiring precision of the bow and arrow. Give it time. See you back here in the morning? Yeah, but I'm going to stick around here now and try firing a few more arrows. Like you said, got to get stronger. Just don't exhaust yourself. And remember, this is only one weapon. Soon, I will teach you to use a six-shooter, blades. Blades. Now we hear the sound of an arrow firing and missing at its target. <laughs> Mia grunts. Another arrow, and we fade. Another little musical cue to show the passage of time. We'll come back, and there'll be some hammer sounds pounding on metal and some footsteps as Simon approaches Mia. First knife training today? Yeah. Look at this knife. All mine. Protector gave it to me. Said he made it when he was about my age. Showed me how to take care of it. Sharpen it. Gonna take real good care of it. Ain't nobody give me nothing nice before. <laughs> Look at what I made. I've been working on this at night for about two weeks. See this? Little flat piece of metal fits right inside my fist like this. 
And you got these little leather straps with hoops to hold it onto my crippled fucking hand. And then... Whoosh, whoosh. She starts swinging that claw around. If you guys look on the page, you'll see it. <laughs> like a claw. This is amazing, right? Amazing. And dangerous. Do you think about anything ever except killing Mia? Like, ever? Not really. Why would I? More whooshing as <laughs> she keeps on swinging her new toy around. The, these people, this place, the lost people, that's us. Something special is happening here, Mia. They have accepted us. These people want us to be a part of, they want me to be a part of their world. I ain't never had that before. You, you don't seem to give a shit about anyone here or, or anything at all. <laughs> I don't. Don't need to either. Got you. Got delicate poison. Y'all help me deal with anyone else. Y'all are all I need. I know you done lost a lot, but that's why I care. I don't want you blind to what you got here. With this place and, and the people, really hope you can see it before it's too late. I can see just fine, Simon. Thought you'd have been more impressed is all. Gotta hit the sack now. More training in the morning. Soft footsteps fading away, more of that whooshing of that claw, starting to see the building of this little family. Musical cue, give us more of the passage of time. Now we hear, we're still in that training mode, so we hear the chatter of about 12 women waiting for training to begin. Well, here we're going to do a quick little ah, ad break. Thank you, David. Because this episode of Cabin Fever Radio is sponsored by Rano Films. Have you ever had an idea for a movie or TV show but don't know where to start? It can seem very daunting when you start to realize all the manpower you will need from a director, camera op, first AC, sound, boom op, line producer, g and &E, editor, etc., etc. Don't even mention someone to handle the budget and schedule the project. But no need to fear, Rono Films is here. Rono Films is a production company that works hand in hand with indie filmmakers, writers, actors, and creators and can handle the logistics to produce a film and turn your idea into reality. So if you're ready to make that movie idea you can't stop thinking about, contact Rono Films for a free consultation by mentioning Cabin Fever Radio via their contact page at ronofilms.com. That is R-U-A-N-O-F-I-L-M-S dot com. Don't forget to mention Cabin Fever Radio. That will help you get the ball rolling and make that movie. End of ad break. Awesome. And so what we'll do is we'll have a musical cue as we fade it out going into the ad break. <clears throat> then we'll have a musical cue bringing us back out of the ad break. And, and as that music starts to fade, we'll hear the sound that puts us back into training mode. We'll hear like 12 women uh, standing there getting ready to train. We'll hear some staffs knocking about and stuff. All right. Line up now. Six here and six over here. Face off. For this round, you only use your staffs. On my command, go. And now we hear the smacking, boom, 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 and the grunts of people fighting. And so if I can get all of my girls here that are on, uh, on tonight, if you all, when you submit, if at the end of your tapes, if you're just a little bit of, uh, 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 just give me some options and just make your own little drop-in tape of, of grunting options. And I'll put these in here with some blows and stuff like that. Hmm. Mia is quite a good natural fighter, but so undisciplined. She seems to never use the moves you trained them with. We hear the loud crack of wood on wood. Smack! Two loud female grunts as the blow comes down. So a big one from you, Kelsey, on this, when you submit to me later, a big, ugh, like that. She does seem quite at home when allowed to go wild. Oh! She just hit someone else's opponent on accident. A uh, delicate ghost? It looks like a few of them are teaming up on her now. 
now we'll have like a flurry of blows and kind of get to me as POV. So we'll hear a bunch of tick tack 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 as everybody's kind of teaming up on her. <sighs> okay, I see how it is. <laughs> More of that wooden staff smacking. Smack, smack, smack. I'll kill all of you. More of that smacking and maybe a couple skull blows. Tonk, tonk, tonk. Hey, stop. You, you, and you. All of you. Clear the field now. Mia, stop now. Couple more blows because she's ignoring. Bam, 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 bam. And we Mia, hear like a little. Enough. Give me that one more time. Sorry, I stepped on you. Mia, that's enough. Couple more blows. Get this crazy beast off, off, off me! She's trying to kill me! You ready to die? Huh? Ain't such a weak little girl now, am I? Mia! Please! No more! Mia, if you don't stop this right now, I will be forced to stop you myself, and I assure you that you will be injured. Please! I don't want to hurt you! <laughs> I know. Well, I'm gonna try that again. <laughs> Ain't none of y'all gonna hurt me. I'm the one that does the hurting now. You're right, though. Took this a bit too far. I'll stop. I've had enough. We all have. You will not return to training for three days. You must learn control, Mia. <laughs> control? You want to control me? To hell with all of you! We'll hear the staff being thrown to the ground. And Mia runs off. Mia, wait! No, Simon. Let her go. Give her space. She needs to breathe. She will return soon. We'll have uh, another musical cue for passage of time. Uh, we'll hear some birds chirping to establish it's like an early, early thing. And hear a couple very soft early morning footsteps approaching. Morning, Simon. Mia? Mia, you okay? Where'd you go? Go nowhere. I'm not okay, Simon. <clears throat> I need to kill all them that took my life from me. The only reason I'm still alive. But first, there is one other thing I need help with. And I need that help from you, Simon. Uh, what do you need, Mia? I think it's time to go home. Can you take me back there where you found me that night? I need to see it. It's a first step on getting some kind of life back. Um, what? I, I thought he, I thought we could, you ain't gonna start. No, I mean my house. I need answers. Gotta see that place, see where they, where at. Well, who I was, who I was, can't keep pretending it's not there. I always deserve to say goodbye to who I used to be. I need to see, get that behind me. I'll come back, finish healing, finish training, and then I'll start the killing. Well. You ain't going back out there without me. Of course not. But I think it's best we ride out of here before first light in the morning without anyone else any the wiser to all this. Don't need no discussions. Here's some hissing coals here. She pours her coffee essentially onto some flames and the crunching of the coal as she stomps on those now wet embers. All right. In the morning, then. See you right here before first light. And now we'll have both their footsteps kind of going away. Another musical cue for passage of time. And the slow trotting footsteps of two horses just kind of lazily making their way down the road. <sighs> really? I wanted to go through those animals growing up. They always better to me than any human being. Being. What? It's not human being, it's human being. Huh. I guess that makes sense. 
they always be in something mad, mean, two faced, bad, bad. Uh-uh. This this ain't sad. This is being angry. Resolute. This is taking control. There'll be time for sad after. After what? Now I'm gonna put in like a strong wind, or basically sound like a wind blowing through a crack. It'll be that kind of wind, and we hear a little something fluttering in that wind. Mia, Mia, you see that? A woman's bonnet with blood on it. That ain't good. Gonna have some flashbacks here, guys. So I'm gonna take some stuff from the first episode of Jefferson and those guys breaking in, and there'll be some swirling a little bit as the rest of this happens. I'm gonna keep on layering in Jefferson, even though we're seeing and hearing the Black Thief, we're gonna get a little visitation from Jefferson from chapter one with some echo and stuff. <laughs> Came from down that way. Looks like that coach has been turned over. Here's my chance right now. Bastards ain't getting away, and they ain't hurting one more soul. Yeah! Kicks her horse, takes off running into action. The horse picks up its gallop, and then it fades off because we're at Simon's POV, and he's just kind of sitting there going, "What the hell, lady?" Unless you, that little boy, and that sweet little girl of yours want to join your husband out there as buzzer child, you're going to hand over that necklace. Hey, someone's riding up on us real fast. Is, is that a little boy riding? What's that little guy up to? What's he holding? We'll have the approaching gallop. becomes thunderous as she gets really, really closer and closer to them. That's not a little boy. That's some crazy woman. She's jumping off. Is that a claw? <laughs> Thud. Mia jumps onto the Mexican thief. Thunk as the claw sinks into the, sinks into the man's arm. And then another big thump as they both kind of hit the ground. And then some scrambling oh. as Mia gets back up onto her feet. <laughs> Shit! What the hell? Ah! My arm. She almost cut my goddamn arm off with that claw. The sound effects of approaching gallop of Simon's horse. Mia! Wait! Look! Wait, lady! It's not what it looks like! Wait a minute! We hear the sound of her gun whipping out of the holster. You're going to have to shoot through them to get to me. And I'm going to be blasting, too. Oh, oh my God, no. No, Mommy. Mommy. Oh, no. <laughs> More hallucinations. Edward. Emma. More hallucinations. You. You ain't hurting no more kids. The galloping horse becomes thunderous. Mean lady, I don't know you. Please, we'll just go now. Be on our way. We's real sorry. Sound of a hammer being cocked. Please, miss. Ain't no need for nobody to be starting shooting. Bang. Ah, no. Ah, what you ah, now the sound effects of, of an adult and two kids scrambling away. Mia, look out behind you. I got him. Ah! Combination of some punches from Simon to the Mexican thief. Here, stay with me. Just, just stay down. Well, well, looks like you're changed. Well, well, looks like your tastes haven't changed much. Still after innocent women and children? What are you staring at? Oh, my hat blew off. Staring at my scars? Your hands did this. You fucking scalped me. Some punches coming to the end in the background 
as Simon's done beating on the Mexican guy? Now stay down, or I swear I'll rip the arm the rest of the way off and beat you to death with it. Screw you, you little... Bang, Simon shoots him. Shit, never gave you that chance, I guess. Lady, y'all crazy. Never seen you. Never seen? Well, you see now. Look at what you did. Ah! The ah! of the claw. Thunk. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Here, you can have it back. There's gunkin' on my claw anyway. Now you'll be staring about half as much. Splat. Oh, dear God. Oh, dear Lord in heaven above. Don't oh, look, honey. Keep, keep your heads down. Crunching of footsteps on hard gravel. Mia? Not now, Simon. Black Thief is still in the background crying. Mommy? Sarah, honey, don't stare. She's a monster, Mommy. A, a witch. Sarah! <laughs> monster? <laughs> Maybe. I'll tell you what. Y'all get on them horses, ride straight down that way on this road, and don't stop till you see the goddamn sheriff. Gotta get out of here. Come on, Sarah. Come on, Matthew. Hurry. Hurry! We hear the scurrying array of, of some children crying and their footsteps moving away. Tell him what about how you got attacked. Tell him about the fucking monster came and saved you. Go on, get out of here. The mom and the children getting on a couple horses and riding away, fading away. Hard footsteps on the dirt as Mia turns back ready to keep on torturing the black thief. Uh-uh, not you. Where you think you go and you murdering black bastard. Think I'm gonna let you just crawl away? Not with my claw on your spine, you ain't. God! Oh. I can't move my legs! <laughs> Severed your spine. And here I figured you didn't even have one. <laughs> well, shit. Ain't the first time I've been wrong, I guess. Oh, oh please! I'll do anything! Oh, please. Oh, I remember begging. Didn't do much for me. I swear, I don't know you. Please. Mia, Mia, it's not him. Make sure you never forget me again. Thunk, thunk, thunk. Mia! Bang! No! No! He was mine! <laughs> what did he do? Punch, punch, punch. Mia starts hitting Simon. Uh, uh, Mia, stop! It wasn't him, Mia. It wasn't him. They're both dead. It, it wasn't them. It, it wasn't him. <laughs> How do you know? Why are you so sure? I, I know it ain't him because I know who it was who did this to you and your family. I was there. It, it was my awful daddy that caused you all this. It was my daddy. What? This, this necklace and this locket. I was there. I, I took them from you. I, I saw it all, but I couldn't do nothing. I thought you was all dead, so I took it to remember you by his all. Somehow to keep you alive, maybe by having this. I, I, I don't know. Give me that locket. Click, click. The locket opens. Michael. Edward, Emma, 
Rebecca. But, but then I saw you. I, I saw you alive. I thought I was seeing things, but no, you were alive. So I've been trying to help since. Since, since I couldn't help them, and and I finally feel like I matter. You, you matter, Mia. Yeah. Well, come on. This detour has cost us, and now we're fighting the sun. Let's move. Musical cue comes up. We hear the two horses trotting off, fading into the distance. As the musical cue fades, we hear the horses trotting back in. What's that sign say? It says, this property claimed and legally owned by Blake Industrial Gold Mining Incorporated. What does that mean? It means the company my husband used to work for now owns this place. I think they're gonna dig for gold here. So, this what you're looking for? These grave markers? Say, Michael Falcone, 1846 to 1876. Rebecca Falcone, Edward and Emma Falcone. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I guess. Just needed this. Move forward to remind me. I wouldn't have been able to do this a month ago, Simon. Thank you for coming, for being here. Of course. Can you stop me if you try? Their horses stop. We hear them get off. The door of the Falcon home uh, squeaks as they enter. Will you, will you tell me about him? <laughs> Still can't remember much. Starting to remember more though. <laughs> Emma, <laughs> my girl. She loved horses, all animals really. You remind me of her. One of her papa's friends was a metal worker and taught her how to <laughs> make shoes. This was her first one. Did she keep it for luck? <laughs> no, no. She didn't believe in luck. Very much a child of God. Closer to him than I ever was. Don't know where she got that. <laughs> See this duster? Michael would get home, be this duster inside the door. <laughs> I would always get so pissed, but he would just call out, Me more. I can I could listen to him speak his native tongue for hours. Mia me me more? Oh, that's what you were saying? What are you talking about? When I found you, or, or followed you that night, you kept saying something, and, and I thought it was your name, Mia. But you were saying Mia Moore. Hmm. That makes sense. That was the first thing I heard, first thing I said in the morning, and the last thing I said at night. What's it mean? It means my love. I like that. It's, it's real pretty. But don't you want me and everyone else to start calling you Rebecca? Like, like, like it says in your locket? That's your name, right? Your real name, Rebecca? <sighs> Ain't her no more. Just stick with Mia. Rebecca, she died here with her family. Well, we're gonna lose the sun completely soon. 
and I got one more thing for us to do before we head home. We hear the footsteps of Mia and Simon as they go out the door. The door creaks open and shut behind them. The sun glints sharply on a golden locket hanging on the grave marker for Rebecca Falcone as Mia and Simon ride back toward their new home among the lost people. Rebecca Falcone is finally laid to rest. And now Mia only has one thing on her mind. Revenge. The horses trot off in the distance and we have music. It's, it's, it's wild because on some levels you would look at the first chapter as being the most emotional chapter because it's where she loses her family, her kids and everything like that. But for me, throughout the three years of writing and developing on this, this scene at the end of this is the most emotional scene for me. When you find out how these two people who are not blood related have formed a bond and even though it's exposed, every, all the truth is out, they continue down this path together by choice. And for me, there's something really, really magical in that moment. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for writing it. Yeah. Sure. That's a good one. So That's on a, on that note, we do want to obviously thank all the cast that is here today, and to all our viewers, thank you for watching, whether it be live or after the fact. And like uh, Bobby said at the beginning, we will be making this into a produced podcast that will have all the sound effects, music cues. And uh, that is also going to be something that's going to be fun for us to even just record. Like uh, for last week's, uh, I was recording some eating, some sleeping and, and stuff like that. And it's, it was pretty fun to do that. I make strange requests. And you yeah. guys are so gracious <laughs> to fulfill them. I, I am forever in your debt. Yeah. So it, it will become something that will be a little bit more polished. Although always seeing the live stream is always fun for the viewers to see kind of behind the scenes of how it goes and then into something even better. So you guys can follow the different links in the description for everyone here. Their Instagrams are in the description so you can follow them and all the creative things that they're doing as well as cabinfeverradio.com. That's our official site where we will be posting more information and different updates on what we're doing as well as patreon.com slash Kevin Fever if you want to contribute and help us produce all this. And again, we want to thank the audience for seeing us. And if you're on Facebook, share it with as many people as you can, like it. If you're on uh, YouTube, you know, like, comment, subscribe, everything and all the fun stuff. And uh, one thing that we always mention is we always have a post show and again, that's uh, only exclusive to Patreon. So make sure to go to patreon.com. And with a simple uh, donation, you can see exclusive footage of our post show, which is we're talking a little bit more behind the scenes and what we're going to do for the next show and just chit chat with the cast and crew. And yeah, David, uh, hey, you know, people that were on Patreon and got to watch the post shows, they got to find out that we were doing Vengeance Turns before other people found out about it. So yeah, that's the kind of stuff you get to know. So yeah, so it's very interesting information. Uh, and again, even if it's just chit chat, uh, we will have it so you guys can see it. And another thing, I know uh, Rob has the, the Western background. And again, me, I will be, hopefully if it renders, my face is getting stuck right now. No, ha ha, Ooh, I'm back space. in space. I told you. Oh, he's back. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> no way, no. Straight away. Is that what happened? No, there he goes. <laughs> I, I left with the with the rocket that uh launched out this morning with SpaceX. Yes, I'm with them currently right now. Oh, that's neat. 
Nice. But, but again, I said, what's up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So thank you, everyone who uh, joined us. Thank you, cast and crew. Thank, thank you, me. lovely cats and animals that are popping up usually towards the end of the show and sometimes uh, <laughs> hop into us uh, on the post show. But again, remember, check out all the links in the description and hopefully we'll see you next week, Saturday, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for chapter numero three. Chick gets crazy. Snick, snicky, snick, snicky. Yee. So yes, thank you and see you soon. Uh, how do I turn off the thing? Ha ha, ha. <laughs> And now we're in post show?